Hey, we're already we're already rolling. So welcome to welcome to the first <laughs> live AMZ seller real talk. Uh, you know my name for anyone who uh, doesn't know me is Curtis Johnson. I am the president of Managed by Stats. I know um, you. you know me. I okay. know you. Uh, this is uh, my ever elusive because that's what I always call you. <laughs> He's my ever elusive co-host. I'm not. Uh, Danin <laughs> slash Justin Coleman. Slash who knows. Yeah, um, usually, actually, at this point, usually he's joining me. But, um, you know, it's actually supposed to be his wife. Yeah. It would be much better with his wife. She's more qualified for she's this. she's just also she's so much cooler. So much cooler. Yeah. But she has a tiny little baby that she's taking care of right now. So we're stuck with Justin, Dana, Dana and Justin. Let's just get past the name <laughs> thing. Who do we have with us today? Hello. Okay, today we are joined by um, two veteran sellers, master sellers, you might even say, Seth Stevens and Sean Hart. Um, the reason, it's funny, we don't ever really have two people on as guests for the same podcast, but the reason we're doing that this time is because you guys seem to be connected at the hip anyways. Like, do you even do anything separate professionally business-wise? I don't even think so. You know, right? we call it the uh, guaranteed uh, mutual destruction policy. You see, you <laughs> I do all the dirty work, but Seth seems to know where all the bodies are buried. So, you know, we yeah, have to yeah, yeah. stay in the same so room. So you kind of have to carry him around. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but it's uh, you guys sort of uh, specialize in different aspects, at least as far as I've kind of experienced with you guys so far. Sean, you seem to always find the most unique ways to drive traffic into Amazon <laughs> e-commerce that no one ever thinks of, mm -hmm. <laughs> which uh, is a huge advantage because if no one else is thinking of it, then you don't have a million other people doing the same thing. And Seth, you are a master of Amazon. You really are. You 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 know manage huge amounts of business ongoing. So between the two of you, you are a uh, complete seller. Separately, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what that would be. Separately, we're, we're no good there, Curtis. That's right. Yeah, we don't exist. <laughs> That's right. Um, very cool. So um, what, what I wanted to find out from you guys is, first off, why don't you give us a little bit of like your, your backstory? Where, how did you get into this whole selling shindig? You know, where, where do you call it? What are your roots? How'd you get into this, this thing? Sean, you start well, uh, further back in history than I do, so take it away. Yeah, a little longer in the tooth, I guess, is what you call yeah. it. I'm, yeah. I'm getting on in age here, Curtis, so don't hurt us, man. That's the new <laughs> motto, don't hurt us, Curtis. So, you know, a long, like long time ago, before I got into internet marketing, you know, that was before it was cool. I actually told <laughs> folks when they asked what I do for a living, I told them, yeah, you're smiling because you can remember those days, right? I told them I play piano in a brothel because it was a lot more socially <laughs> acceptable than being an internet marketer. You know, it was kind of embarrassing. And then when I got into uh, doing Google traffic, you know, I, I would always say, you know, I'm, I'm doing pay-per-click, pay-per-click, you know. And then one time I was at a funeral and my cousin walks up and says, what's all this paperclip selling I hear you talking about? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, how do you make money selling paperclips? So I had to take him under under the arm, you know, and take him out after the funeral and explain to him what traffic means. But at the end of the day, Curtis, you're right. If we don't have traffic, we don't have eyes on our offer, buddy. Yeah. We're dead in the water. So, you know, what I what got me started on it, you know, I was way before internet marketing came into my life. I was uh, you know, I was a one um, a one trick pony, I guess. And, you know, when I think back, guys, about when I, when I used to go out before I understood traffic and, and internet marketing, it was almost like, you know, it was like I woke up every day unemployed, you know, because I had to go create customers for the day. And I was, unfortunately, didn't know any better in my early 20s. I was in the transaction business, meaning I had to go find fresh new meat to kill every day or I would starve, theoretically. So when I started learning internet marketing and online selling, I was able to not only diversify my offerings, but also multiply myself into, you know, almost infinity because my message was getting out there around the world. Even if I was sleeping, we were making money. So where else in this world, you know, unless you're like me, I started on the street selling roses, God's honest truth. Where else can you make money and create value, get paid for it while you're sitting in your pajamas and your house slippers, right? Yeah. So <laughs> out of 
out of sheer greed and laziness, I started selling online. Yeah. Seth, what's your backstory? Well, Sean, you already know it, but I will let you know, Curtis. I don't even think you know this story. <laughs> he doesn't um, even wear pajamas. Whoa. He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically, I started uh, when I was third grade, you know, chasing the dollar, like just like Sean almost. Uh, selling Pokemon cards underneath the table uh, at the lunch. Which is a really profitable thing to do these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Strangely enough. Isn't that weird? So I was oh, doing that in the so third weird. grade and just always wanted to own my own business. So transition to years and years later, I'm out of college, got a job that I like, but it's not really exciting me every day. And I reach out to Sean, which I did an internship in his big marketing company to me when I was in college and I thought, you know, it would be amazing to hear Sean's story. And so I said, Sean, can you just like tell me how to become an entrepreneur? You know, I've tried all these Pokemon businesses and starting a moving company and everything seems to be really challenging for me. Maybe I just don't know the tricks. And so I meet up with Sean and he says, no, what you need to do is you just need to give people what they want. And it was just like eye opening. And then, you know, a year worth of mentoring later, Sean and I go into business together, start of 2014, to take advantage of the opportunity that we saw on Amazon. And it was kind of a whirlwind first two years. Sean, why don't you tell them about the first year when we kind of uh, started totally differently than any seller that we had known or had been exposed to. I'm heartbroken though, man. You see these weakling arms? You didn't yeah, invite me into the moving off. business? <laughs> yeah, you know, cut me. He, he legitimately started a moving business in college with his buddies. What was the name of it? I think it was like stoned or drunk. We'll move your junk. That was how it went, right? <laughs> Close. <laughs> He's like, oh, actually, man. it was so, just Seth's moving company. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually Move It LLC. Uh, I felt yeah. really cool. Seth move it. LLC. <laughs> yeah. Move it. Move it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess... Uh, when Seth and I first got joined at the hip, like he said, he did an internship in my marketing company, which we were 90% offline. I had a huge call center. We were doing massive amounts of uh, media, both uh, print ads and television ads all over the country and was selling a lot of products. But when Seth come under my employee as an intern, he calls it. But I thought interns are supposed to work for free, Seth. I, it reminds mm -hmm. me, I paid you, so you owe me. I, guess that's I true. paid him to teach him. That was pretty good. But that's yeah, when he good. came in, that means in, Seth is a good salesman. That's right. <laughs> he is. Oh, the story's even worse than that. I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> but anyway, um, I had sold that company to private equity who came out and paid me like way too much, way more than I thought it was worth, obviously. Um, gave a, a five year no compete. So I thought I'd go hang out, stay at home and, um, you know, enjoy the kids, I guess. But right. staying at home and enjoying the kids is like watching grass grow. You know, it gets boring after a while. So I started peddling on Amazon because I'd have some some leftover inventory and stuff from my business that I sold. And so I just since I was an avid Amazon shopper, it made sense. Let me try to mm -hmm. sell it on Amazon. So I clicked this famous little button that said, sell yours or sell one like it or something like that. Right. And right. wow, um, you know, the product is irrelevant, but what what that was, what it did to me, it was like a complete paradigm shift in my mindset, knowing that, you know, where I came from, we had to do everything. We had to develop a product. We had to manufacture packaging, marketing, shipping, customer service, processing the whole nine yards and fulfillment, not to mention uh, customer returns, you know, the ugly elephant in the room. Right. So when I seen what Amazon did with their FBA program, I thought, wow. I can take all this knowledge that I've accumulated over years and apply that to the opportunity of FBA and be able to scale infinitely because I'm, I'm leveraging the Amazon infrastructure to grow. So I started playing around and I was able to scrape up about $250,000 in sales my first uh, three months into business, which just happened to be fourth quarter of 2013. So I don't think I'm fancy or anything. I just got lucky. <laughs> So Seth reaches out to me and says, hey, I'm looking for a mentor. And I'm like, gosh, I'm looking to get out of the house. Let's go meet up at Starbucks. And so That's when awesome. we met up, I basically showed him what I was doing. I was a little bit embarrassed, you know, because when he worked with me, I had, you know, a 100,000 square foot office building and full of inventory in the warehouse and, you know, 150 employees. We were doing a couple hundred grand a day in sales on the phone. 
and now I'm peddling stuff out of my garage. You know, I felt like a right. like a flea market guy. Nothing against flea yeah. market guys, but you know, and Seth said, "Now wait a minute, do what?" So I pull up these days. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Not enough traffic, man. You can yeah. only fit so many people at <laughs> six feet apart. So <laughs> I showed Seth what I was doing on my laptop, and I was like, "Look, here's what I'm doing." I'm selling rubber bands on Amazon. I've done 250 grand in sales. And he goes, that's pretty interesting. How do you do it? I show him all I did. All right. And he goes, are you making any profit? So what do you mean if I'm making any profit? I mean, I'm selling. <laughs> he goes, well, that doesn't mean you're making profit. And being right. the finance geek that he is, he showed me mm, pretty quickly how guy. I wasn't making any profit. But right. <laughs> the other side of the coin, he went straight back to his cubicle at his old employer and listed a couple of things on Amazon, I think made the cash register ring before he made it home that day. How crazy mm. is that? That's so awesome. for the first time in my 30s, this guy's calling me back after I gave him advice. The next day he's like, oh, so Sean, I, I, I did what you said. I listed something on Amazon, it sold. Now what do I do? And I'm like, whoa, hang on a second. Who are you and what have you done with these people who are always looking for free advice? Well, what yeah. do you mean? I was like, you actually did what I told you to do? Right. Wow. So. To me, it was eye-opening. So we got That's together rare. and said, hey, it is. When I get through with this Christmas, you know, I'm going to have a little inventory left. We'll throw that in the kitty. I'll uh, I'll put up the money. You put up the time, and we'll create a business uh, that revolves around selling on Amazon. And Sounds like a was, good uh, song in intro. Yeah, right. 14. <laughs> so then fast Heard forward. I yeah. know why we're always Seven. together, because Sean has the ideas, and I have to make it profitable. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's like, I'd like to sell exactly. kitty cats that are joined at the hip and wear yeah. nice little. And you're like, what? It's not a bad idea. If <laughs> yeah. there's a market. Oh, boy. Yep. There's, there's a market. <laughs> I'm sure there's a market for just about anything these yeah. days. So then sure. fast forward to now because, and this is kind of one of the Let me tell you that first year, Curtis. Yeah, yeah. The first two years <laughs> is always interesting to hear. And I like to tell this story. So Sean brings his rubber band inventory and 20 grand to the table in January. <laughs> <laughs> And we just get started and we're like, let's just take advantage of some of the contacts Sean had in China because we can source products pretty quick. So yeah. through that through that first year, 2014, we launched 70 different private label products at seven wow. zero. And we're like, wow, you know, we did $3 million in sales, feeling pretty good. For 2015, we say, we're gonna launch a product a day. So our goal is 365 products, <laughs> Dang. all our wow. brand. Right. And so we we put Sean to work. We say, go and find the opportunity. I'll manage the office. We'll we'll build uh, everything related to Amazon. Now you understand how I get the experience at Amazon, Curtis. I had to build yeah. 500 listings. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we ended up launching 350 private label products in 2015. Whoa. And we did wow. about $10 million in sales that year. So then, Which Sean, one? you probably reprimanded him for not getting up to 365. He no, it was, Sean, it was Sean's duty to pick the products. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I dropped the ball. You know, I, I took every Unbelievable. Sunday. Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, if Amazon didn't change all the time, I'm sure you'd yeah. know how to do it by the like the back of your hand. Jeez, right? Yeah, yeah we're exactly. talking about so, you know, power changing sources. every. Yeah. So, Curtis, what happened was, you know, we're sending uh, Sean to China every 90 days to uh, wow. source all these 350 products, right? And he starts complaining, you know, I'm six foot seven, nearly seven foot tall. Mm -hmm. I can't ride in coach. I can't squeeze in. I got to ride first class. Yeah, you know, man. we got to come up with a way to cover some of these costs. We got to come up with a way to cover the cost of my first class plane ticket. So he said, I'm going to I'm going to bring some people with me and we're going to teach them on the ground in China how to source and they'll pay it and they'll cover the cost. And it worked really well. Right. Huh. And so the very first time we did that, Curtis, we had like five people come and then we had 10 people, 20 people, 100 people. And then, Sean, what was the biggest group we had? Like 250 people that you're teaching in China how to source. Two. Yeah, two two hundred forty nine people in June of two thousand seventeen. It was, wow. it was ridiculous, and you know our so our offer got knocked off numerous times. You know, I turned so many students that took that trip into competitors, and you know yeah. I'm not angry about it. That's exactly what I would have done. Welcome to Capital. Uh, yeah. But it just goes to sh yeah, exactly. It just goes to show you what the 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 not only the depth but also the breadth of information that we were able to to deliver and, and contacts that we shared. So. What that let me know was that there was a huge market out there of, of folks that really wanted to be doing what we were doing 
And, you know, I'd already retired. That was my third time retiring, you know, at 36 years old. So you can tell I was pretty bored and, and uh, frustrated. So I just wanted to do something big. So I convinced Seth right from the get-go, guys, to do exactly what you're doing right here today. It's like, let's just give. Let, don't yeah, let anyone cool. in this industry out give us. Right. Let's share the opportunity. And Seth, cool. you know, he was still a little wet behind the ears. And he was thinking, no, 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 we can't share this secret. Seth, there's enough for everybody. Let's just spread it around, you know? And then we started doing that. We started coaching and sharing. And what happened was we were able to develop a pretty robust community. That's my princess. Hey, cutie. A Hi, pretty princess. robust community of Amazon sellers who were, that's heaven. No, oh, wrong side. You got me twisted, don't you? Um, <laughs> well, we developed a community of sellers who were not only willing to learn from what we did, but also share the best strategies that were working in their business. So, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't long before enterprising young Seth said, hey, I got an idea. Let's make money on this. So then we, of course, created a paid community. Yeah. And um, from that point forward, we were able to go figure out what it was that people were lacking in their business and, you know, fill in the blanks for them, uh, share with them the missing uh, pieces to the puzzle. And in turn, we created a community that also gives to other sellers. So yeah, it's been cool. pretty amazing. Uh, we're truly blessed to be a part of the community around the globe. Um, I think we had uh, we have members in I forget how many how many different countries, but uh, I had a good count on it at one point, but several. So here we are giving it again. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because and and it's funny because like how how as a seller today, how how is your business doing between the two of you? So Curtis, our business is structured. We, we take uh, the approach to Amazon a little bit different. Our whole mm -hmm. model is to build up brands and spin them off. So okay. we've done that several times now. Um, th those products that I told you we launched in 2014, 2015, well, some of them got put together in different brands and we spin those off and we sell them. So at any okay. given time, that's gonna depend on, our business is uh, basically a brand factory is how we like to look at it. So Sean's awesome. out there looking for the next hot product. Then he turns it over to us. We then create that, turn it into a brand, and then sell off the brand. So we just sold a business, what, uh, last July, Sean? Yeah, July 17th, I believe it was. And it was like, it was a $2 million deal. Uh, but we've been okay. involved awesome. in, in selling businesses as low, or Amazon brands, we'll call it. I think the, the smallest one we sold was probably 400,000, give or take. And uh, up to 10 or 11 million, I believe it was. Um, but right now, I mean, Seth, the only business that he's working and involved in right now, that brand, well, there's a couple of them. The, one of them's doing, what, a little over a million per month, Seth? Yeah, that one's doing about a million a month. And then there's, we have, so we have two different brands that we're working on right now. One's doing about a million a month, Curtis. And then another one's doing about 30,000 a month. Obviously, different stages of the business. But our goal right. is to, <laughs> right? I mean, we're going to be exiting them. That's the whole strategy yeah. eventually. Yeah. Cool. Well, and and there's part of the reason that I wanted to ask that is I knew you guys are volume sellers. And I think that sometimes that gets, you know, I guess like overlooked and skipped when that really is probably the most important part is, is the person who's looking to guide you in a direction, are they actually actively doing it themselves? Because if they're not, then, you know, they're just, they're repackaging something that they did before that they ain't doing no more. So um, on top of that, you guys keep finding new ways to kind of like help people dive in better. So like we're, we're there's two things that I think would be really interesting to talk about with you guys. One is what is that process? What are some of the things that you want to get in place in order to get that best you know, return when you do eventually sell. And then the other thing is I figure we could talk about some kind of strategy that is 2021 specific, something that's like new cutting edge to drive in traffic. So that's fair. let's talk about both those. Trade Probably shows. not at exactly the same time. They will cover one and okay. then the other. Just well, let me jump into the first topic. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. and this this may come as a surprise, and this is not something that's super sexy that's in in all the Facebook groups, but it's something that that drives me insane, frankly, because it's constantly overlooked. The thing that really changed my perspective of my business, and granted, I've never had a real job. Okay, I started my first mm -hmm. business when I was in high school. All right, 
and always been able to make a way. Never had any help. Could never borrow any money until I didn't need to. You know the story, right? Yeah. So I had to work out of a, on a shoestring budget. Now think about when I was out there on the street peddling my wares. Every single day I had to go out and find new customers. I didn't right. realize that I was in the transaction business, like I said mm-hmm. before. And what happens, sure, Amazon's a great opportunity. Sure, Amazon lowers the barrier to entry for any entrepreneur. Amazon levels the playing field for almost anyone who's willing to put a little money in inventory and some time in building a listing, fair? Mm -hmm. But here's where people are missing the boat. What drives me crazy about it is when I first started selling online, I was able to multiply and multiply my business many, many times over because I was building a relationship. It wasn't a transaction anymore. I was building a customer base that I was able to go tap into over and over and over again because I'm able to be in millions of places at the same time, right? Infinitely right. scalable, you understand? And here's yeah. where Amazon sellers are getting it wrong and it drives me nuts, Curtis. We only let Amazon send us traffic every day, which is a lot of traffic, mind you. Uh, one of these businesses is over a million a month. It's been that way since October and it's not yeah. going away anytime soon, but they're, that's only one facet to a legitimate business. If sure. you think okay. about, it'd be like, Walmart only having uh, one product on the shelf or only only <laughs> one store, you know what I mean? Sure. Or only you know, like one checkout. Amazon right. is just one channel for traffic and it's a huge right. channel. But what happens if you wake up tomorrow and Amazon doesn't love you anymore? <laughs> or if you wake up uh, tomorrow. I, I, I know what happens. He understands that one <laughs> very well. I know what happens hundreds of times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not all of those 350 products that we launched in 2015 made it to an exit. Let me tell you that, brother. Yeah. But when Amazon wakes up and decides they want to eat your lunch, they're going to go knock off your product. I don't care how big right. you are. But yeah. it's here's true. where we're missing the boat. You can't treat this business as a transactional business. You have to treat this business as a real business with a long, right. long legs and a long runway by right. utilizing the assets that you're building by having an Amazon business. And what do I mean right. by that? I'm talking about a customer base. It drives right. me okay. insane how many people I talk to, guys, that don't do anything after the initial sale. Yeah. Some people may send an email through the automated system asking for a review, but yep. the best person in the world that's, that's most likely to do business with you again there's a reason why you invited me on your podcast, Curtis, because mm-hmm. we have a history of doing business together, right? It's a That's relationship. Right. Yep. Why not tap into that relationship? It's an infinite source of income. If you know yeah. how to do it right, you can go back to that trough over and over and over again. If you're selling a decent product, you're providing good customer service, and your customers are, are getting good value and, and a good experience. And yep. this is where Amazon sellers, if you're listening to this, chances are 99% of your Amazon sellers, right? Yeah. You have to orchestrate repeat business from your existing customers. Every business that I've ever sold, whether online or off, revolved around the entire value revolved around the value of the customer base. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Why do you think Amazon doesn't give us, why don't they give us the customer's email address and phone number? <laughs> Because Anymore. it's not my customer, yeah. it's their customer, yeah. all right? Once once that customer becomes my customer, now I can go back to him or her and ask for repeat business over and over, and that's where a lot of us are missing the boat. So yeah. now you're asking yourself if I can hear it now. How? Well, that's great, Sean, but how do I go back and ask an Amazon buyer it to buy more? Biggest question, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to orchestrate, you have to create a situation that makes that customer want to engage with you as a seller through any type of customer acquisition funnel, any type of opt-in, product insert, whatever it is, you have to you have to create the situation to make me want to go, hey, Mr. Seller, thank you for the great deal. Give me more, put me on your mailing list, keep me abreast of new launches, and let me know where I can get more. I love this product, okay? Yeah. And train me that I get better customer service, I get a more personalized experience, I get better value, better pricing, and whatever it is, whatever value you're creating, if I work with you directly, okay? And the easiest way to do this, guys, there's there's easy way to do this, it's called a product insert. Anytime right. you order a product on Amazon, there's a little card inside of the product that says, hey, I hope you love this product. If you have a problem, please 
reach out to us. And by the way, mm-hmm. would you go leave a review? Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. Yep. At least half of the private label products that you order on Amazon have that. But yeah. where, what they're not doing is they're not gathering any information about the customer. They're not okay. creating a database of people who do business with them. And so the easiest way to do that is provide value. If you provide value on that insert, i.e., hey, go here and register now. We'll give you a coupon code to use in our store. Next time you want to purchase on Amazon, 15% off. Value, right? right? Give that customer a compelling reason to want to come back for more. Hey, if you go here and check out this important information about how you can safely use this product, how you can get the most benefit out of this product, we're not poaching Amazon's customers. We're providing amazing, valuable customer service. And that's what we've been able to do. That's why we're able to scale faster and more than most other sellers, because Mm -hmm. we're going back over and over and over again and getting repeat sales. All right. Remember, if you're not getting repeat sales and you're not creating that relationship with the customer and you want fresh meat every morning, I don't care how big your business is, Curtis, you're waking up every morning unemployed and depending on Amazon to show you a little love and send you more traffic. Stop the insanity. You have to take control of that. Yep, Sean, and then let me just add a little bit there for you too, Curtis. Uh, For context, we started tracking this stuff and in 2018, which really got our attention, 40% of our gross sales came from things that we did after the purchase. So post-purchase was 40%. And that's not counting. Sean didn't even mention that one of the biggest things you can do when you're sending traffic back to your listing, you're obviously going to rank your keywords for for highly searched terms. You're going yeah. to be then developing goodwill with them so you can they're more likely to give you a review. We get mm-hmm. all these things helping our conversion, which then helps our ranking, which then creates more sales for us. And then like Sean said, we're delivering those earn, inserts every time, right? So we're getting more emails. So it's like this loop that reinforces itself. So sure. if you can create 40% of your sales outside of Amazon or initiate it outside of Amazon and drive them back through your listings, Think yeah, about the rank better. power that that yeah, creates and huge, all the yeah. reviews you're going to get, right? Yeah. But everyone yep, says, well, sense. how do I get started? I don't have a customer list. How do I? Well, yeah. you have to start with one email address and then you have 10, <laughs> then you have 100 and eventually right. you have millions of them. All right. And collecting the emails, gentlemen, is not the end all. You have to right. tap into something. those emails <laughs> yeah. and you have to squeeze some profit out of them. So I see both you of you using Max. I'm on a email. Mac. email. Success on a Mac. When's the last time you uh, bought a Windows computer? Never heard of it. When's the last time? Uh, you, yeah, I was eleven. Exactly. You were eleven. Okay, but you're fourteen now. So, yeah. all right. Three when's years, the last yeah, time you changed go. your hairstyle, Curtis? How long you had that hairstyle? Oh, uh, two years. Two years. Couple two years. years. Right. Two when's years. the last time you changed the cologne that you use? When's the last time you decided a different type of protein powder for your smoothie? What we want I'm to glad do. You're not humans, asking questions like, "When was the last time you showered?" This is this could get awkward. We know you don't shower. You know, <laughs> I, can, I can smell you from here. <laughs> we're uh, 350 miles away. No, seriously though, um, if we're creatures of habit, as humans, we want to do what we're already comfortable with. No one right. wants to change, right? Uh, if if you're if you're using a certain cologne or a protein powder or whatever it is a consumable product, chances are if you had a good experience, you with me, you you're going to go it. back to the mm-hmm. same seller. That's all right. right. So same why are you yeah. forcing that customer to go to Amazon and find someone else to do business with? I'm not saying Amazon's a bad guy. That's what we would do. If we were Amazon. We want to yeah. own the customer list. Right. It's an yeah. asset. It's the yeah. biggest, most valuable asset in anyone's business. Your lawn guy has an asset of customers, right? Yeah. Your yep. pool yeah. service guy has an asset of customers. Why do you go out there and look for new customers every day? It's crazy. Okay, so here, here's here's my thing on this because you, it's so funny because I asked you two areas that we wanted to talk about, traffic and how to sell with, I guess you could look at it like the highest multiplier. And I, I already see that you're, you're, you've actually found one common denominator between both of these questions, which is that asset that is your customer base. Now, I'm sure I speak for a lot of sellers when they say, uh, yeah, that's great, but how, how do you do that? And how do you do that without wanting to bang your head against the proverbial wall? 
over and over again. You have to bang your head against the proverbial wall. <laughs> but no matter how many times you bang your head against the wall, if it's a cement wall, you're probably not going to break the wall, right? Sure. But you sure. have to learn from your experience, okay? And here's the, the biggest problem, because I've seen this from day one, Curtis. Yeah. If you have a $100,000 a month business, do you want to add forty grand to your sales? That's kind of a stupid question, right? Who on this call is making sales every day that don't want to add 40% revenue Absolutely. From the exact same customer. Right. Yeah. A tiny little bit of effort, okay? Yeah. No one, anybody that says they wouldn't is crazy. That's yeah. why when whenever I remember I've been a marketer since I could walk and you know and uh, and talk. And yeah. I've been able to grow faster and more profitable than my competitors because I generate more sales from the exact same activities, sure. which allows me to pay more to acquire a customer. And whoever you're competing with the person, guy or gal, seller or whatever, who can pay more to acquire a new customer is always, always, always going to win that battle if everything well, else right is now. equal. All right. Yeah. So first lesson to Seth was Seth, and he told you himself, if you just find out what people want to buy and just give it to them, yeah. you won't. You take all the guessing out of it. Yeah. So if you find a starving crowd or a hungry market or whatever you want to call it, and you simply just give them what they're already searching for. All you have to do is massage the numbers and orchestrate as many repeat sales as you can. And then some goofball will come along and pay you a three, four, five, or six multiple on your earnings because they're not smart enough to go out there and do what you've already done. Right, In reality, right. anybody can do it. I'm not doing yeah. anything special. You know, You're it's like work. when I'm selling roses on the street, guys. I found out when I go to the same location more than once. Guys come back, say, oh, I'm so glad you're here. My, my old lady's mad at me. I'm in the doghouse. I need roses. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Sean, oh, I'm going to call you out. Do I'm going to call you out. I, I got to call, call you out. Call me out. I'm the Rose Boy. You're, 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 <laughs> I love when you do this. <laughs> Sean has this knack, just for anyone who hasn't known Sean, even as long as I've known Sean. He has a knack for um, making people think that he's not brilliant. When in actual oh, fact, please. he is brilliant and he does know uh, things that nobody else knows. So don't let him pull the wool wow. over your eyes. I, I, uh, He's actually a fairly sharp dude. He always tries to blame Seth for intellect, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's actually a shared feature. I could be wrong, well, but I'm pretty sure you buttered him up like a nice scone instead of called him out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Now well, he's going to give us the real the choose between me and his wife right now. I really hope exactly. he would still Did choose his that, wife. But. <laughs> Seth has always been the voice of reason, you know, and I look at Seth as my handler. Yeah. You know, I'm like this wild lion in the cage at the at the circus. I'm going crazy, and I'm you know I'm, I'm clawing and biting and trying to get grab everything yeah. I possibly can. And yeah. Seth is the voice of reason. He's the tamer yep. back there. He's the handler. He knows how to funnel my energy in the right direction so that we both can profit from it. But there's a secret. Yeah. All right, there's a certain sequence of events that have to take place for any business. All right, if you're just an Amazon seller. Before you can create a sale on Amazon, what has to happen? You have to have traffic to your listing, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before you have traffic have to your listing, you have to have a product. Yeah. You have to have a product. Thank you. Yeah. Before you have to have a product, what do you have to do? You have to figure out money. which product you want to sell. Yeah. Before you yeah. figure that out, you have to know how to use the platform. So there's a certain sequence. Yeah. Sure. You decide you want to go into business, you select a product. You purchase the product, you ship the product, you package the product, you build the listing, you drive traffic, and you hope and pray that something happens. And a lot of times it yep. does. All right? Yep. Yep. We have a completely different system. You wouldn't be surprised if I told you that you already know 40%. I don't care if we're selling information, if we're doing seminars live in China, if we're selling silicone spatulas, God forbid, on Amazon. 40% <laughs> on average of our revenue comes from everything that we do after the initial sale. Some call it the back end, some call it up sales, some call it down sales. Call it whatever you want. I've been around long enough that the names are always gonna change, you yeah. know, but we have what we call a funnel. And if you think about a funnel, you know, it used to be, it used to be called uh, direct response marketing. Exactly, what's the top of the funnel look like? Yeah, yeah. We know scientifically that the more crap you put in the top of the funnel, and the more sifting and sorting you do, the more high dollar uh, repeat yeah. customers are gonna come out of the bottom of the funnel. What right. does your funnel look like? Right. Is it more sponsored ads on Amazon? God, I hope not. Okay. Right. Well, that's not really a we funnel, have, is it? That's, that's, the, that's the top of the 
You're just like, ah, oh, buy this. Exactly. Buy this. <laughs> you have yeah. to take your customer, your prospect by the hand every time and walk them through a systematic step-by-step -step approach for every single purchase that they make. And it doesn't stop there. My friend and colleague, right. Jason Flatling, you know who he is. He okay. coined the phrase, a buyer in motion, what? Stays in motion. Stays in motion. A buyer's not that one. done My buying. My physics teacher <laughs> would be so proud of me right now. <laughs> Listen, no, seriously, a buyer is not finished buying until they say they're finished buying, yeah. not when you yeah, say yeah. they're finished buying. Right. So we have a systematic approach, as crazy and chaotic as it seems, we have an approach that we use. And, you know, let me just, I'm going to call you out, Curtis. Ooh. Mr. Curtis, Ooh. don't hurt us. Are you ready? I'm working on this systematic approach for the business that you are the president of, am I not? We That's are, true. I'm creating, for, I put three hours of my time in for you today, working on a funnel for your business, right? That's right. Three hours and 40 minutes There's, now. Yeah. Well, that's before. <laughs> Different now, this is something yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, seriously, it's there's true. a systematic approach from customer right. acquisition to pitch, to upsell, resell, rehash, Back in the old days when I was hiring kids to go door to door selling DVDs, yes, I did that too. Hmm. I would hire them, equip them with a canned pitch, they knock on the door, they pitch, they pass the order book and they sell. What happens if they get an order? They we do money. what we call rehash. The easiest yeah. guy in the world to sell to is someone who just bought from you, Yeah. right? Yeah. So we have an approach for that. Step one, step two, step three, if this, then that, if this, then that. And I actually prepared Curtis, for you and for your community here. You ready for this? Drum roll. Do, 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 do. I have what I call oh, my dang it. My, this is my opportunity. <laughs> oh, you have a soundboard there? Yeah, I've got a, soundboard, got a soundboard, but I don't. Does it have drum roll? He's just going to start. Dr oh, uh, no, sorry, that's not the drum roll. <laughs> no. Nope. There we go. Oh, no, that's, that's definitely not a drum roll. Okay. <laughs> we're we're going to skip that. Let's yeah, we're going to drum roll. Let's, drum roll. Let's just do the... <laughs> All right, listen. I've created and mapped out for you, a complete flow of, it's about 90% of what we do for every single business that we approach. It's wow. here's the top line customer. Here's how we get them into our funnel. Here's how we sift and sort and shake and filter them out. If they don't buy, here's what we do. And it's a, it's a flow chart I designed specifically for you. And guess what? I'm hearing you say now, nice. where do I get it? <laughs> Would you like to know where to get it? <laughs> kind of. If I told if you that me. 40% of every $1 million in sales that we make, okay, so 400000 for every million, comes from this specific process. Mm -hmm. And I gave you that process, okay, it's one thing to go download the funnel and look at the map and go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's something but entirely different it. if you take it like Seth did and eat it and yeah. digest yeah, it definitely. and so, spit so you're saying it back it's, out after it's you not filter art? through what it is. I'm sorry. Well, uh, so you're you're it's saying not it's not art. Either. It's not just to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a science, baby. It's not art. Yeah. It's a science. Oh yeah. And I don't know if it's if this is the appropriate place to give the URL. So I'll just leave that up to you. I'll leave yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's just um, send it over to us, and we'll we'll put a link in the description for everyone because we're on different places, and I'm sure it's easier to Sweet. do it that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want it on audio. See, it's a good thing I didn't throw it out there. But listen, I designed the entire map. All right. It's a yeah. dynamic structure of every single deal that we do. All right. Based on years of experience, hundred million dollars in sales plus. I stopped counting at a hundred million actually, which is kind of stupid. Yeah, we should that, keep that kinda, going. It is kind of a <laughs> yeah. nice benchmark to hit, huh? Yeah. It is, but then you're like, okay, that someday we'll wake up and go, Are we at a, are we at a, at a billion yet? And then we'll yeah, do yeah, the number exactly. and be like, Yes. And then we'll brag about it for two years and then forget. But <laughs> if I gave you that tool, it's going to open your eyes so you know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to a systematic step-by-step -step approach for every single customer every single time, just like mm -hmm. you paid me very, very handsomely to do for your company, Curtis. That's right. All mm -hmm. right. Remember the map that I gave you? Here's what mm -hmm. we're going to do for you. You can visualize it. Well, I have yep. something similar for everyone. All that's right. Awesome. I'll give it to you. That's, that's at the same really... time, guys, if you don't TV, do guys. anything with it, then you're stupid. Shame on you. you. <laughs> Guys, to give you an idea, like we pay, we rarely did pay 
Sean a lot of money for what he put together for you guys. And if he's got anything even remotely as awesome as what he put together for us, that's for you guys, for Amazon sellers, this is gonna be a really important thing. So uh, don't expect it up immediately, but we'll put it on the link. We'll put a link to it in this in this when uh, when we- When we've got it. Yeah, when we've got it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a URL. That's you know that's you gotta opt in for it, man. Damn Here I'm teaching you about building a customer database. <laughs> and so I'm using the tool to add to my database. So it's gonna yeah. cost you an email address. <laughs> yeah. uh, Curtis, I just wanted to point out there though, like what Sean's describing there, yeah. um, is, is like the refinement over the last five or six years. You know, now we're yeah. well over a thousand products launched. I told you right. in one year we launched 350 products. That gives us a lot of opportunities to test different inserts. I mean, a lot of people you probably talked to, Curtis, say, mm -hmm. I've got an insert but i don't capture any emails and right. yeah. i don't if i do capture any emails i don't do anything with them it's, after that right. it's amazing it's amazing how many yeah. people have an insert where it doesn't actually collect data that makes it usable for the the cost of the company like mm -hmm. it's a huge it's a huge yep. uh, omitted i have yeah, one sitting right over there i'm going to grab it here in a minute so when I yeah. disappear, you're going to be like, where'd he go? I'm going to go grab it out of the trash can. I just threw it away. But yeah, seriously. Perfect. It's, uh, it's something that we if you, if you, said, I've got, a, I've got an insert in every single one of our products. And so we made, we forced them to track the conversion rate for it. How mm -hmm. many people that get your insert actually do anything? How many people yeah. actually come and register, right? And it was 1%. The last wow. one that, that I tracked, yeah. I looked at the metrics for you today before I got on, on here, 72% uh, mm -hmm. versus 1% is our wow, option. Wow, that's yeah. huge. That's huge. So 70% imagine... of the customers that we get to come to our page decide to opt in. And so what Sean said earlier is so true. It is you have to provide value to your customer and then re-engage them. Sean, yeah. show, them, show them the one you just found. So See, now I don't I know if that's a good a... one or not. It's not. We put insane pride on insuring. We put insane pride on insuring. This had to be coming from somewhere in the Far East. <laughs> you receive a product in mint condition. To leave a seller feedback, go here. To leave a product for you, go here. Why, right. in so God's name, no would I want to do that for you? Customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what value are you me, providing man? for them? 100%. I know that I'll, I'll bring this up. radio station is pretty cool, but Sean's favorite radio station is WWFM. What's in it for me? If there ain't nothing in it for me, guess what? I don't care. <laughs> hey, guys, huge. we've got a couple of questions from our viewers. Uh, okay. I'll start out with Kahit, if I, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Looks pretty good. Yeah. I have a question about product selection. I found a great product to sell, but I noticed it has that it's patented, but there are a lot of different FBA sellers that are still selling the product. Is that weird? You, you want me to take yeah, that, that one, weird. I'll start. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay. Yes. If uh, we've had our hand slapped several times due to patent issues and trademark issues and trade dress issues and all that. So if you aren't comfortable going into that market, knowing you're going to, you might have to defend yourself. I would say, Hey, go and find a product to test elsewhere. Uh, yeah. The last time that we got sued for something like this, we had $70,000 worth of legal fees for a $20,000 uh, settlement bill. That's not Ooh. a very fun scenario to be in, right? So yeah. Sean, tell them how you get around a patent or if you change that advice. Well, what you've identified, Kahi, is a starving market. If this product's being sold, obviously there's no guesswork in it, right? So real customers like me are voting yes with their credit card on Amazon. Right. So you have a great market find something else if you pivot that market into another product that complements this product or adds to or you know that you can use with this product then really what you're doing is tapping into that starving market that's already there without infringing on someone's patent Great point, i've John. done I'll it both ways yeah i'll cool. give you an example of a product that we did that exact thing for there was a uh a product curtis that was a uh, helped people with snoring and Whoa, it was a little pin mechanism that black. you put in your nose. Damn it. Uh-oh, Curtis. You we lost check out what be, just went black. Right hey, hey black can you guys hear us, though? Man. Yes. You can hear us, though? Yes. Oh, good. Well, that's interesting. So, uh, Danon's going to find out why our camera just died. Maybe the camera just died. we're still here. That would be really simple. Well, Curtis, I'll continue on with my story. Yeah, then. keep going. Keep so. going. Keep going. <laughs> so, anyways. Oh, oh, he's back. He's back. Wow. So Curtis, what Sean's talking about there? He disappeared. Just like transitioning. Where is he? 
<laughs> Abba hey, he's back. He can't hear you. I can't he's hear you guys. Okay, okay. There we go. Now you there. Okay. So right. carry on. Uh, Anyways, we... so Sean's saying okay. to find for for uh, you know this gentleman who found his his product idea about his patent, and we did the exact same thing. You just find a product where you know that there's a a starving crowd, like Sean said. You you just want to tap into that demand. And for instance, one of our products was a product that helps with snoring. It was called a snore pen. It goes in your nose and it helps with snoring. How wow. can we tap into that same market without violating a patent? Well, right. we just sold a different type of product that served that exact same customer. We ranked for the exact same keywords and we were able to tap into that in the exact same way, just from a different angle with a different product. And that totally solved that problem. Patenting is also kind of a scary. Cups, yeah. yeah, it is scary. But we're yeah, because like you kind of tell craze. everyone what you're doing. Right? You know what I'm Care talking about? about? The stainless steel cups that all the boaters and fishermen are drinking out of that they're paying 50 bucks no. for? Like that. Exactly. No idea. Whenever Wall was selling yet. Never heard of it. And co <laughs> hey, coincidentally, after we already got sued for our version of it, we pivoted that business and decided to sell Yeti lids and Yeti holders mm. and Yeti mm -hmm. straps. So, uh, Kahit, if, if your product, if you're not comfortable, then it's probably not a viable product, right? You don't wanna get sued. So just figure out what it is that goes along with that product. If I buy A, what else would I likely want? Sure, you know? And then cool. you can get you can get listed as frequently bought together. Exactly, yeah. that's one awesome. way around it. The, the other and thing Sean, about- Tell them how we would enter that market. We wouldn't buy a thousand, we wouldn't commit to that brand and commit right. to that product before we got real life data. I mean, you're gonna buy what? Five or 10 units max? and test it in the market to see if it works for us. That Man, you is just opened up a huge product. can of worms. Yeah, that's a can of worms right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. That's a totally the, different here's, call. <laughs> here's the thing about that, because the, we're, we're kind of, it's sort of like walking through a minefield with you guys, because part of the problem is that you've covered these topics for so many years. You could, you could throw out a sentence like, yeah, you would just buy five or 10 of them, and then someone's like, what in the? <laughs> What? The, this is where we're doing a webinar tomorrow, guys. Hop onto the webinar tomorrow because that's where you're going to kind of get a little bit more intro to not necessarily, I don't know if you guys are, if we're covering that topic, but you'll get it, and it, it. Okay, good. Yeah. So we're going to cover that topic tomorrow. So we'll put the link in the description below so you'll have a chance to actually dive over there and actually hear <laughs> what he's talking about because, yeah, can of worms for sure. Cool. We have one yeah. more question. This is from Jolene. Yeah. I personally don't read marketing emails. How do we reach customers like me? What's the next effective contact point? And she asks if it's well, listen, Instagram. A couple of answers. Jolene, you said? Yeah. Jolene, if great question, and I understand. Perfectly. I for one, am the first guy to look for the unsubscribe button every single time I get an email. Ask Seth. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. create funnels for email captures for our customers, okay? I hate emails, but guess what, Jolene? <laughs> I am not my own customer. Yeah. Thankfully, Very good chances point. are you're not your own customer. A buyer is not done buying until they say they're buying. And right. the best thing you can get a customer to do is make a decision when you send an email. A, buy, click and buy, B, unsubscribe. Yeah. One or the other. Don't give them any other choice because the job mm. of the email is for you to put more money in your pocket at the end of the day. And that's part mm. of your funnel. Those customers that unsubscribe, wish them well. We still love them. We just love them at a distance. But get them off your list because they're not profitable. And right. thank right. you, Jolene. <laughs> I love it. I see the question now. So, yeah, right I mean, not trying to be smart, but chances are you're not your own customer. I'm not my own customer either. Kurt is not his own customer. We don't buy, in most cases, what we sell. But that right. doesn't mean someone out there doesn't want to hear from me. And I, for one, Jolene, think that you're doing your existing customers a terrible injustice by not reaching out and providing more valuable content. They want to hear from you. It's like when you go to a presentation, a seminar, and you see a speaker, and you fall in love with that speaker, and you say, how can I get more information? And you almost feel cheated if they don't offer you their book or their product or yeah. you know mm -hmm. a link to join them on Facebook. They yeah, how do want we carry to hear from you, Jolene. On. Yeah, exactly. Especially if they love your product, they love your service, whatever that is. Get over that fear. You know, it's 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 pent up potential if you have an email list that you're not emailing. Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. and of course there are other ways to reach out, but like you also got to deal with what where you can reach the most people. And that's part mm -hmm. of the the fact of the matter with email marketing. It's it's tried and true at this point. Yes, there are other strategies that <laughs> all business owners or everyone involved in marketing, they're working on figuring out kind of the next thing, but you also do want to do the thing that has worked for, God, how long has email marketing worked? How, how long? For as long as I can type www. Yeah, right? yeah. Since, the, yeah. since the letter, if you don't send this to 10 people, then you're gonna <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah well <laughs> when I found out what smtp stood for that changed my yeah. life i gotta tell you <laughs> second part of your question i think it's simple message transfer protocol right something like that okay yeah, yeah. listen sms right I, you, ever heard yeah, of SMS? you stole the words right out of my mouth this, Sean. Is, this is the most it. i was trying to look obnoxious. important <laughs> <sighs> oh you can't Hang even on. spell sms curtis stop but MS, um, uh, sorry, the the email is a pretty non-invasive form of communication, okay? Mm -hmm. And the SMS is super invasive. You know, yes. it's right there in your pocket every day. Now, here's a quick fact: Sean Hart doesn't text. I gave it up yes. in May, May tenth, two thousand sixteen. No more text messaging for me. No send or receive. But we use it every single day to promote our business. One hundred percent. Was your it your question, thumbs? Yeah. <laughs> I was just tired of like living for everyone else. I want to have meaningful uh, conversations with meaningful the arthritis. people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's yeah, the arthritis, exactly. <laughs> but you know, it's just a constant interruption, so I just opted out. So yeah, yeah. You know, and, got, and to kind of touch on the point he's here. making right there, it, it's it's SMS is huge in terms of where things are going. Email right. marketing open rates. If you're lucky, what 20 percent. That's, that, about, that would be that's wouldn't that be what amazing? I was going to tell you, Curtis, is yeah. that you know the people that we're communicating with that I told you when Sean was gone, they had opted in seventy two percent of the time. Right now, this is going to blow your mind. The our flow and how we're communicating with them, they want the value. So Jolene, just so you know, Sean's right. You're not your customer. This open rate is going to blow your mind, Curtis. Literally, our first email has over an eighty percent open rate because we're telling wow, them to go and look for the value. How about okay. that? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. this comes down to the the quality of yeah. your of your funnel then because it's all think, in our funnel flow. <laughs> yeah. It's all your I, think I don't taken. Yeah, I don't know how to better state this, but like there there's also we're already now granted we were futzing around for the first 10 minutes, but we're already <laughs> like 46 minutes after that first 10 minutes into yeah. this thing. There's no way we're going to cover the breadth of what you guys know in any kind of justifiably logical way in a podcast. Now, we're gonna have these guys on time and time again for sure, yeah. um, but also we're- Despite appearances, we like them. <laughs> um, we're, you mean we're I have gonna, to get another haircut, webinar. Curtis? <laughs> I know, sorry, I know. I'll, you know what we'll do is we'll like record it tomorrow and then we'll publish it in a month so you can go <laughs> basically like two months without getting a haircut. Does that sound good? There you you go. like that, don't I you? I could go on forever, man. There's just there's so much <laughs> stuff. You're not going to learn it all in one conversation. There's, but yeah, there's part no of the way. flow that we use, believe it or not, is email. It's snail mail. It's SMS. Oh. Uh, we we usually don't incorporate social media into our funnels. A lot of people do, uh, but we just get such an amazing open rate. And you know what? Front and center, Jolene. As soon as you open my email, it says, "If you don't wish to receive this message, please." In giant bold underscored letters. Click here to unsubscribe. Yeah. And then halfway through the message, it says, don't care to see my messages? Unsubscribe here. And guess what's at the bottom of the email? You Bye want now. to remove yourself from the list? Giant letters, unsubscribe. <laughs> if you go uh, download my funnel flow, you'll find out. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, here, so I'm about to put in the chat really quick. Here, say something else useful. Yeah, so uh, we actually something do- Something else useful. <laughs> Yeah, Jolene says that that uh, she loves that you don't text. <laughs> <laughs> well, I use smoke signals, but yeah, hey, that's cool. email me, knock on my door, or call me. Otherwise, I'm what about a ghost. what about fax? I mean, is that, <laughs> is that I, that I left that with my checkbook and my eight track player. <laughs> <laughs> so we have one one quick question, and this is going to be an easy answer. I think is uh, this is from Argo. How is quick, fast, hurry different than others? Ooh, no. We don't want to do that? Nah. Okay, that's going to be covered. Come Argo, on tomorrow. That's, that's going to be covered in the webinar tomorrow. Yep, come on tomorrow. Um, you know what else is covered are... in the webinar tomorrow? 
your funnel? We, cover, we go into a strategy, a scientific selling strategy that we use, that we Seth alluded to earlier, where if you want to test a massive amount of, a massive amount of product, that's too many M's for me. If you want to <laughs> test a lot of products with very little financial risk, and try to identify easy, quick winners, then we have a formula for you that yeah. we Ooh. show you how you can test five products for $500 in less than five weeks and wow, guarantee you'll find at least one winner. So you, I see a theme with Quick Fastery with you guys. It's the fives. What is it about the fives? You got your five, 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 test five products for 500 bucks and Little five you minutes know, of your Sean time is going to get five, five times your income. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have four wives Sorry. and one girlfriend. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Um, okay, guys, and I'm about to drop the the link for tomorrow's webinar into the chat. If I could find it. Like, I've never had such a hard time finding something that <laughs> is usually right in front of my face. But, um, yeah, yeah, no, it's great. I'm loving it. If it was so, there five um, times, you probably wouldn't lose it, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> Give me five. Yeah, ha, that's a cat. Oh, it's wrong okay, camera. Okay, so... Um, so we're we're gonna we're gonna kill the live, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go um, over and record the content for the MBS only guys. So basically, the way we do this is we we give uh, people on YouTube and on the public side of Facebook only so much love. We do love you guys, but we love managed by stat subscribers more. I don't know how to say it any more, you know, exactly Clearly. than that. Yeah, it means you're for sale. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Our love is for sale. My love is for sale. Yeah, you know what they call that. It's like right? it's like the hook. Uh, yeah, well, uh, no, what do they call that, Sean? Tell me. <laughs> we'll save that Come for on. the insiders. No, yeah. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't do it. <laughs> Prostitution. Called your bluff. Called your bluff. <laughs> Damn it, he did it. Answered your bluff. <laughs> I love Argo that we have a second wave. delay, so we're literally not on the same page. Not even at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, very good. So then here's um, here's what we'll do. Obviously, the second we end this, uh, also you'll be able to rewatch any bits that you missed, share it with other people, do all that good stuff. So we'll, um, we will kill the live here. Um, if you're seeing this on YouTube or if you're seeing this, uh, hearing this Apple podcast, uh, five star on Apple podcast. Here's the cool thing. Um, we don't, we're, we don't, we're not, you know, hindered by Amazon's rules. Um, we only want five stars. If you like us less, reconsider why you're wrong, really, and just give us a five star. That's really the way we want that to go. Yeah. Um, otherwise, on uh, <laughs> like, share, do all that good stuff. And um, if you are a Managed by Stats user, um, go over to the user group and you'll see the uh, the bonus content where you, we're going to... User Facebook group. User it's, Facebook it's group. It's Managed yes, by Stats you. users is the Facebook group. That's right. That's yeah. And if... Um, I know it's a lot of confusing. So for everyone else, um, enjoy the rest of your day. Hey, this is actually going out the day we're shooting it. So enjoy yeah. your Wednesday the yeah. 10th. Yeah. <laughs> and may you have five times as many awesome times <laughs> today. Uh, exactly. All right. Can we take With five? With that, thank you, guys for, uh, we'll thank you guys for coming on. Um, again, if anyone is is curious how to find these guys, we're going to throw a link into the, into the description so you can catch the uh, the webinar tomorrow. And then also, if, if you're seeing this even after Thursday, then we'll, we'll give you another way to get hold of them for sure. Cool. Um, with that, peace out. Thanks, guys.